Good afternoon. Welcome back to Marty's Tying Bench. Today I'm putting together materials and kits for our social fly tying with the Rocky Mountain Flycasters Trout Unlimited chapter in Fort Collins, Colorado. We got a lot of smallmouth bass in Horse Tooth Reservoir, so thought we'd tie a I thought we would tie a smallmouth pattern and there just isn't a better one than Clouser's minnow. So this is a Clouser minnow with some modifications. Uh, anybody that tells you that they've got an improved Clouser minnow, well, they're probably going to burn in hell. So I'm only claiming to have modified it, so maybe I'll only get I'll only get singed. Anyway, size four hook. This is a saltwater hook, but you can use uh, like a Gamakatsu B10S, uh, the 9089 from TMC, or Mustad makes a. A nice freshwater bass hook that's economical to boot. 140 denier thread. You're going to pull kind of hard on a few spots, so you do want something bigger than 8x. We're going to tie in some dumbbell eyes, and I think these are size small. They come in large, medium, small, mini, and micro. Now you're going to pick the size according to how fast you want this to sink, rather than as a proportion on the fly, so today we're using a, a small. Now I'm going to set that back from the eye a considerable amount because we got a lot of things to tie in up on the front and I want to save some space. Now you see I didn't crisscross, I tied those all in the same direction and then I'll start making the crossing wraps and as I do I'll twist that dumbbell eyes and the, the thread will stretch a little bit until finally you got it back to square. Once you get it to square, make some bundling wraps going under the dumbbell eyes, but staying on top of the hook. And that will lock it in place pretty good. Uh, you can use super glue if you like, but uh, this is going to hold up just, just fine. Now our first material is bucktail in white. Let me get a bundle here. Bucktail is like dubbing. It's real easy to use too much. So keep it sparse. This is this is kind of on the bulky side, so I'm going to pull a few of them out there. It's still on the bulky side, but we're going to go with it. Saltwater guys used to just complain that there was too much bucktail. They wanted it sparser, sparser, sparser. Now to tie this in, I'm going to get the thread back up against the dumbbell eyes so that when I make a couple of wraps, I'm going to make sure none of those stubs extend over the eye of the hook, and then I can tighten up and pull them together. Then I'm going to jump behind the eyes and work my way to a position that's you know, halfway between the barb and the point of the hook. You don't, you don't want to go back too far or your tail will droop. You want that to stay straight. Now here's, another, here's a modification to the original Clouser. Um, we'll be done with the body with, with the original Clouser, but I'm going to add some Palmer chenille, small Palmer chenille. This is going to give it just a little more volume, but still keeping it light and thin. Now this Palmer chenille is on kind of a braided core, and the braid is somewhat flat, so you want to tie it in so that all your strands are going back. And if you can maintain that through your first wrap, and every successive wrap will want to lay flat and continue to leave the brushy part sticking out towards the rear. All right. Now I've moved the thread in front of the eyes. And now it's time to, to turn this upside down. This is the way the hook's going to ride in the water. 
with the dumbbell flipping the hook over. But it was easier to tie the other way until this point. Now I need it to be upside down. For a little bit of rubber legs, we're going to get some silly legs. This is a gold chrome. You can maybe see some of that reflection. Just take a couple of strands of it. And these don't need to be terribly long. <clears throat> I just want them to go about three fourths of the way back the you know the length of the fly. So I'm going to tie these in on my side of the hook right next to that dumbbell. Then I'll take these two short ones that I measured and go under the eye and then back up against the eye and tie it down again. And then the ones on my side are long. I'll just kind of measure them against the first. And there I got some legs that are about the same. Now we want some flash going down the side as well. You can use any kind of flash you want. This is a polar flash. It's kind of crinkly. You can use Flashaboo, Firefly, DNA Hollow Fusion. There are a lot of good flashes out there. You don't need very much to, to brighten up this fly, so just a half a dozen strands of flash, maybe eight. But this one needs to be the length of the body, so tie it somewhere in the middle of the flash strands and lay it down right on top of those legs you tied in. Fold these under the eye and to the back. And there we go. Now we're going to cut these so that they're just a little bit longer than the bucktail. Final topping is yellow bucktail. You'll see a lot of chartreuse clousers. Yellow is a good color for, for our freshwater stuff. We use it for walleye as well as bass. Similar, similar volume of hair. And I'll stroke the short ones out. And that's pretty sparse out there at the end, so I'm going to reach back and grab the very longest ones, pull them out, and kind of hand stack it. Just lay them back in the bundle. You could put it in a hair stacker, but hair stackers don't really work that well with a crinkly material like this. But here, that's, that's a little better. Now I'm going to measure this one so that it's maybe just a little bit longer or the same length as the white bucktail. Again, I want to get my thread back up close to the eyes so that I can lay that in there with a couple of light wraps. Make sure the eye is clear and then tighten up and you can bind it down to the eye. You may get a few stubs sticking out but that's alright. And Notice how the bucktail has kind of shrouded from side to side so that will pin those legs right down against the eye and keep them sweeping back rather than splaying out. Ready for a whip finish? Since I got so many thread wraps on there, I don't need to make the whip finish tight. I can use it to finish the shape. And now a drop of head cement is probably a good idea. Well, maybe need to clean that one out. Anyway, you can do that. Horse tooth clouds or minnow. There 
we'll sweep that back a little bit. You can catch a lot of things on a fly rod.